Hi, Richard here. I've just decided to do a little version 6 video for those people who want to explore version 6. So some of you might want to explore version 6 and not have to waste time trying to work out how to do the things that are obvious in version 5. The end result of this is I'm reaffirmed to stick with version 5 for this course until they fix a couple of major issues. So with no further ado, let's get started. Here's a version 6 file. If I click the, the cross, I'm prompted to save it, but the default location is the Jojoba Online portal, which I don't want or like. I mean, I don't mind the online portal, but I don't like not being given a choice at this point to save it where I want to save it. So if I click these three horizontal lines are pretty much the key to where everything is that you can't see in version 5. So if I go to a version 5 file, all these menus across the top have disappeared, right, in version 6. Well, they're all in here. So if I click Save, and that does give me a little floppy disk, so that seems to imply that I can save it to my computer. But even here, now it's asking me to sign in. <clears throat> well, what? sorry, Georgia, but I don't want to sign in, so I'm going to continue without. I don't even want to be asked that. But even here, I'm not convinced yet where it's going to save. So let's click Save and hope it's going to give us an option. Oh, there it is. So now I can decide where I'm going to put it. But, you know, I just think that's a long way around. Not particularly happy with that. But anyway, that is the way you save files. I prefer in version 5 where it gives you the option to save it or to open a new, a new file. So that's been taken away. Now the next thing we're going to look at are the options and the view menu. So this is version 5, so in the view we can see all the different types of um, canvases. And in options we've got rounding, labeling, font size, etc. So where did they disappear to in version 6? Because I don't see them up here. Well, uh, first of all, if you click this little button, then you should get these. I just recently clicked this and these options didn't come up. So I clicked in and out a couple of times and then they came back. So you're just going to have to muck around with it. Uh, if you click this grid, uh, there's grid on, there's grid off, there's axis on, axis off. So there are those options. And then in this menu, normally this comes collapsed. And for some reason, it's not going to collapse on me. So there you go. Anyway, these are all the view options. So they're the same as version 5. Uh, and then if you click in the settings, this is where the decimal places and the labeling and font size, etc. appear. So that's pretty much covered that. All right, so let's talk about dynamic text because this is the pain. OK, and this is why I'm not going to change the course from a version 5. And I really hope they sort this out by version 7, but there's no guarantees. And if they don't sort it out by version 7, I hope they don't discontinue version 5. So I've just created the, the radius here and I've got a circumference. Now, if I want to turn the circumference onto the value, the name and value, what if I just did value? What would happen there? No, nah, see the value, I don't want the equation, I just want the value. So that's another another problem that I don't think I had in version 5. Anyway, call it name and value. Um, all right, well, let's deal with that for now. Now, if we go to uh, text and put some text in. So we want uh, circumference equals pi. And to get pi, we go into advanced. And here, and it took me about five minutes to find it last time, but I don't know where it is now. Pi times r. Whoops, we want uh, LaTeX. R squared LaTeX. We want this thing. Oh, I think we need, do need to put in R first. Okay, so that becomes a 2. That becomes R. I think that's got it. Then we're going to bring the, whoops, bring the text size up. Text is here. Let's go to large. Kit the cross to get out of there. Cancel that for now. So pi r squared, we've got, we've started, we've started it. Right, now if you just click it gently, or once you get a new, even if you click it on there, you just get a new a new text box, which is bizarre as far as I'm concerned. So double click. Um, now, let's see what happens now if we go, oh, see it won't let me, it won't let me type underneath. If I go down, it won't let me do it. Bizarre. 
Anyway, so let's just t type it all in a straight line for now. Now, what we want, the pi is okay. We want the r to become the r that's over here. And the way you do that is to go to advanced and click on the GeoGebra, and that gives you all the objects, letters, etc., that are being used. So we want that r. And let's see what happens there. Put it up here so we can see what's going on. Pi times 5.24. Well, that's, you know, okay, we've got that. But now we need to, well, then we just want C equals, and we want this C over here, but preferably without the equation of the circle. So we go into here again, click that, and go OK, and dang it, we've got the equation of the circle. What I can show you uh, is that if we, if we now make separate lines for everything and we don't really want the C's in there we just want the equals uh, whoops whoops let's, let's do that see what that looks like still no joy so now we have to do the the dollar signs and I just think this is just compared to version 4 and 5 this is such a pain in the you know where that's ridiculous so we get that, but I still don't know how to get... Now, I'm sure there's a, a fix, but I'm not going to spend hours trying to find this. The message here is, if you want to use, at the moment, and we're talking August in 2020, if you want to use dynamic text, and I personally think dynamic text is one of the key advantages or powers of GeoGebra, if you want to use it, then stick to version 5. Don't know what they're going to do next version. Let's just wait and see. But the, the moral of the story is you need to write it in one line first and then use the dollar signs to, and uh, play around with that. That's pretty much what I want to show you. So if you want to play with version 6, there are some things you need to know and then the rest you should be able to work out for yourself. But the saving aspect and the dynamic text aspect is very sus. I think you will like, though, the way once you start using it, you will probably prefer just some of the just general workflows uh, kind of nicer once you get used to it. So there you go. All right. Let me know how you get on. And thanks for watching.